Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback look at the Sony Cybershot DSC-H90. This is a point and shoot digital camera that comes with a 16 megapixel sensor and a 16x optical zoom lens. The reason why we're taking a look at this camera now, here in 2018, uh, there's actually two reasons for. The first being that we recently did a video on the Nikon Kuplex S800C. We took a look at the Nikon because it was the first camera that came with Android OS on board, and to have a comparative basis for the performance, I picked up the Sony Cybershot. Another reason is because this thing retailed originally for about $240. You can now find it for well under $100, sometimes as low as $50. So it's a pretty low-cost alternative now to more modern and newer point-and-shoots. So some folks wanted us to also take a look at it specifically, and thus we picked it up. So let's start with the design of the camera. It's fairly well constructed, but it's pretty typical as far as Sony cams are concerned. The base here is actually made out of aluminum, so it has a pretty sturdy feel, and the grip here is made out of a soft touch rubber. On the top, we have a traditional dial that allows us to change between different scene modes. Uh, this thing can also record video up to 720p, so not quite full HD like the Nikon could. There's also a two-stage camera shutter key along with a zoom dial and a power on-off switch. On the side here, we did have an integrated microphone and speaker, and there's also the xenon flash. It's a pretty interesting design because it pops up automatically when you select flash on through the software instead of having a manual key that I can tap on to release it up. Now I do think that the design and placement of the zoom, as we'll discuss a little bit more uh, in this review, isn't the most ideal just because it's located very close to the side and because this isn't a very wide camera your hands will naturally want to hold onto this spot if you're using two hands to get a steady image and you'll oftentimes be kind of fiddling around with the position to avoid this flash so that maybe they could have moved it over to the center a little bit to make it a bit more ergonomic. Uh, on the other side, we just have a 16x zoom advertisement. On the bottom, we just have the tripod mount. There's a USB AV out, as well as the battery compartment, uh, which you can see here takes a standard SD card, which is nice to see. On the back, we have a three inch panel, which is reasonably large, even here in 2018, as well as a dimple that you can use to comfortably hold the camera to get a steady image. And there's also your selection of uh, keys for navigating up, down, left, and right, turning flash on or off, as well as self timer modes, tapping on menu, deleting things, and going to the playback key for your gallery. So let's take a quick look at the menu interface here. So it opens up very quickly. It also has a reasonably thin portfolio, um, as we saw in a previous comparison side by side with the Nikon Kuplex, which as you can see here, isn't that much thinner than the Sony, despite having only a 10 times zoom versus 16 times, uh, which is again, pretty impressive for what Sony were able to do. The display, as you can see here, offers very good viewing angles for being a traditional LCD panel. So I can tap once to focus as well as a tap all the way down to snap an image. And one thing you'll notice is that it does take a little bit longer than what you're probably used to on the latest uh, point and shoots, as well as on flagship level cameras like a Galaxy S9 or iPhone 10, which are more or less instantaneous now. Uh, but on this thing, you have to wait a second for it to process and then save the shot. The benefit, of course, is on dedicated point and shoots, the camera performance will still more or less going to be at least as good, if not better, than on flagship level smartphones. You'll get more details, colors will be more realistic. So it's worth the wait. And my opinion, but it's not instantaneous on this particular model, and that's something to quickly keep in mind. Otherwise, if I change a dial, you can see the, the interface also changes. It tells me a little bit more information about the specific modes that I'm using, including manual exposure mode, where I can change the aperture value. There's also a panoramic mode, the video recording mode, which does come with a microphone, by the way, as well as an auto mode, an intelligent auto mode, and a scene selection mode. So if I go into this, for instance, I can now toggle between different things like uh, for capturing people's faces. It says it will shoot with more beautiful skin. So it's almost like a beauty mode that will try and reduce pimples. Um, there's also a, a soft snap, which shoots the subject with a soft background. It's trying to capture that bokeh effect that we see on DSLRs and in modern flagships here in 2018, but it's not nearly as successful in my testing so far. Even when I tried to place objects pretty up close to the lens, um, sometimes the background would still not be quite as blurred out as what you see on an actual uh, real DSLR. But overall, it's a nice little software attempt from Sony, especially from so many years ago. Otherwise, if we turn back into the the 
additional settings here. We can also play around with the menu here to change some of the profiles like ISO, EV, white balance, as well as the image size uh, in addition to the aspect ratio directly from the screens here if I wanted to quickly dial back and forth between some of these settings. So overall, the user experience is uh, pretty easy to understand. And as a whole, I think Sony did a good, good job with the design. A closer look at some sample shots here, you can see that if we try and zoom into the mountains in the distance, I really like how uh, it captures quite a good amount of detail as well as the complexity of the, the scene in terms of colors um, and getting a very natural overall look which is uh, both beautiful as well as realistic. So as a whole I'm still quite impressed with the performance in this regard. If we try and zoom in you can see some of the finer details and the houses below in the shot are still retained fairly well. That's not to say it's all good. Sometimes it takes a little bit too long to focus as well as capture a shot, uh, especially by 2018 standards. So as a result you may get some softer looking shots if you aren't perfectly patient and tried tapping to focus first, um, sometimes you'll lose a little bit of detail. As you can see here in the trees in the distance aren't quite as sharpened as what I'd prefer from my shots to be. But you can see here in the skies, colors are beautiful. Tapping on the menu key, Sony also gives us additional controls. For instance, playing a slideshow, which is actually pretty cool. And I can also play it with music, which is uh, done automatically. There's also a view mode where I can kind of change how the image is viewed, either with a date or with a hidden. I can even do some retouching directly on the camera, such as trimming the size, as well as uh, changing red eye correction and unsharpening certain objects. So there is some basic uh, editing tools built directly into the menus, which is something that I didn't expect on a basic point and shoot camera, but it's there. I can also delete the image, of course, as well as protect it by locking it um, and even printing it by connecting it by USB into a printer directly. So there's definitely a few different software tricks that you have. Now, one thing that Sony did not include was a built-in accelerometer. So as you can see here, rotating the camera on its side, the image doesn't flip automatically. Now, in this shot, we can see both pros and cons. The cons is that uh, the sky is a little bit overexposed. Again, just because I wasn't quite as patient, I just turned it on and snapped the image as quickly as I could. And as a result, it wasn't able to, I think, focus completely perfectly. Some of the details, especially towards the skies, you can see here almost look completely white, a little bit washed out, um, especially when compared to a few other modern phones I was testing out at the same time, including the smartest in Nut Pro 2. It actually fit, turned out a little bit better on the smartphone. So that's an area where, again, speed as well as general performance has improved greatly over the past few years. But the optical zoom is still going to be a highlight on this camera as you can see here being able to zoom in 10 times, 16 times to take a look at finer details such as the brick on the building as well as uh, taking a closer look at the delicate moldings and filigree is one area where again having this optical zoom lens still turns out to be quite beneficial. And here's the same position, but I tried taking the shot using a different mode as well as trying to focus on the sky a little bit more purposefully, and this time it came out much better. You can see more details, especially in the transition between the buildings and the skies. There's more texture, there's more differences of colors, and it's a lot more pleasing to the eye and more, you know, the quality that I expected this camera to produce. So that's the Sony Cybershot DSC-H90. Areas where it's held up well include the resolution, so having 16 megapixels to zoom in is still plenty full uh, all these years later, in addition to having optical image stabilization combined with a larger sensor size, which uh, tends to perform much better under low light environments, especially with a much more powerful xenon flash compared to an LED or LED flash as we see on smartphones. Also having that zoom lens is quite useful, especially if you capture moments uh, that are often distant or far away, Gives you more versatility as well as colors are re replicated very beautifully on this camera as a whole. I also like the overall uh, UI and the software that Sony has built in. Areas where it hasn't held up as well include the fact that shutter speed I now think is a little bit slow. It still makes for a respectable small point and shoot with a excellent 16 times optical zoom if you are on a budget and you just want to pay let's say around 50 or 60 dollars for a camera today. I think that it makes for a good complement to a smartphone just because again of that zoom capability. So thanks for watching this re revisited video here at OS Reviews. This has been the Sony Cybershot DSC H90 digital point-and-shoot camera.